How's it going? In this video, we're going to start with section views. We're going to learn the different types of section views and how to get those in Autodesk Fusion. So the first thing you should be doing is looking at this drawing on the right hand side. This is going to be what we're going to be modeling. Um, something quite simple that should be relatively quick to model and then we'll get into the section view part. This model is in chapter four, it's number two, and this image will also be provided to you. So the first thing you're gonna do in Fusion is create a new sketch. And um, because this was chapter four, all of these drawings were 2D, so this only gave us a front face. So I'm just going to sketch on our front face of our object, and I'm gonna draw a rough sketch of what this should be. So I'm gonna use my line tool, start out at my origin, draw out going right, up, left, and just draw a rough sketch of what I'm supposed to look like. What I'm doing is I'm using my um, I'm using my perpendicular constraints to lock up on 90 degrees. So it's automatically, if you see as I come down here, it's automatically constraining that line when I come down to the line across from it. And I do want that. I want to add those constraints automatically. If um, if I draw it short up here or if I draw it too long, uh, it's not gonna automatically add those constraints and I have to go back and add them. So I'm just gonna click there to drop that. Keep moving in, come down. And that won't lock up on that one, so I'm just gonna drop that anywhere. Come left and then come down again. Okay, so this is the general shape that we have. I could either add um, all the dimensions to it or I could use my constraints to get it. I'm just going to do the dimensions because there's um, relatively few of them. So I'm just going to dimension this line down here to 0.5 which is given to me on my drawing. Move into this line which is also 0.5. The next line over will be 1 inch. And then my top is going to be 0.5. So then I could set my overall length also. That's 3.5. And now I could start over here and start dimensioning. So I'm going to make this line over here 0.5. This line was also 0.5. This line was 1 inch. And then it made my line down here very small, so I'm going to zoom in on that, click it, drop that, and make that 0.5. And then this dimension is already 0 0.5. It's already constrained to that. So sometimes it's um, quicker to place down all dimensions. Sometimes it's quicker to use equals constraints. That's just a uh, personal preference. So this one I use dimensions because they're relatively simple. I didn't have to do math, stuff like that. So next thing I want to do is I want to get this circle, and that circle is placed in the middle of my drawing, one inch up and one and three quarters inch in. So I could hit C on my keyboard to get into the circle command, and then I could use hit or use um, construction lines, these dotted lines they give us, to get to the center of that circle. So if you come to the top line on your drawing and move your mouse left and right, eventually it's going to lock up on a center point. And that center point of that line is going to have a little triangle next to the X. So I know that that's the middle of that line and I could come straight down. And sometimes it'll automatically lock up with the middle of this line to the left. But if it doesn't, you could come over here, lock up on that center point, given the midpoint, use that imaginary line to come back out and should lock up. So once you have those two imaginary lines, we could draw our circle. If you're not given those imaginary lines, I'm going to show you right after we draw our circle how you do that. So if you're not given them, just draw a circle anywhere in the middle. doesn't matter where. That's 1.5 inches. And now we're going to need to dimension that circle. So if this wasn't directly in the center point, say it was over here, we need to dimension it. So I'm going to hit D on my keyboard for dimension. I'm going to go from the center to the bottom from the center of the circle to the bottom. And 
I can see on my drawing that should be one inch. So I'm going to type in one, hit enter. Now I'm going to go from the center of my circle to the right side of my drawing. And I'm given on my drawing that that should be 1.75. So I'm going to place that down and hit enter. And now we are fully dimensioned and we are ready to extrude. So I'm going to hit stop sketch up here. And now I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard to press pull. Select my object. And then, like I said earlier, this was in Chapter 4, so uh, it's a 2D drawing, so we're not given a 3D dimension. So I'm just going to extrude this by 1 inch. Okay. Once I have this, I'm going to save this as my sectioning demo. So I'm going to do a file save. Sectioning demo. Hit Enter. And now I'm going to go over to the drawing environment. So I'm going to click drawing from design. And now I want to do this on my A size LT and make sure you're in inches. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK on that. And now we're done with our dimensions. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to maximize this window. Okay, so our first view is always going to be our base view. So I'm going to click base view and that scale is a little small for this title block. So I'm going to change my scale to one to one. I'm going to make sure I'm equidistant from both corners on the title block. And then I'm going to place my base view down and hit OK. Once I have my base view, now I'm going to start um, getting my section views. So the first thing I could do is I could place in projected views, but um, I want to make sure that I have section views in so I know which projected views to put in. So for section views, we have three different types of section views. We're going to start off with the first section view, which is a full section view. So by clicking the section view option, I'm given an A with a line, with an arrow next to it. So that A is going to be where the section view starts, and then it's going to draw itself to another A where the section view ends. So what I want to do to start this section view is I want to come right at the center or the midpoint of this top line, and then because I don't want that arrow or that A landing on my object, I'm going to move about a quarter inch up. So you should get an imaginary line with an X on it. If you don't, just hover over this midpoint, and it'll pop up. So I'm going to move that up until that A is off of there. I'm going to click to drop it down. And now you can see another A with an arrow. That's going to be where my section view ends. And I'm going to start moving downwards until I'm all the way across the entire view. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm about equidistant from the other A. Then click again. And now I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard once I have those two points placed. Once you have those two points placed, we could start putting down our first section view. So, mattering on which way you're, um, you're placing your view, those arrows are going to always point towards the object that the section view is showing. So, I'm going to place the section view down to the right, hit enter on my keyboard, and that's going to place it down for me. So, there's a couple, um, couple things I want to talk about with section views right at this point. What a section view really is, is a cut down an object. So it would be if I took this object, I took a saw and just cut it right down the center of it, then this section view is showing that cut. So this would be my circle going through my object, is this open area, because that's where it's open. And then the uh, this is called hatching, the hatched area on the top and on the bottom is part of my object. So that's where I actually have solid object. Once you have that section view down, um, there's a couple things to look at. We have uh, a label below our section views to make sure we know which section view it is. And right now I see that my label is in my title block. So I'm going to want to move this up. So I'm going to click my parent view or my base view. And if I move this up, move this view up, my section view should follow it. So I'm going to click and drag on the center point, 
until that section AA scale 1 1 is on my title block and I'm going to place down my view. Now a lot of times you might have a drawing where there's a lot going on inside of it and you need to kind of place this somewhere else. So if you click section AA it gives you the option to move that up. So you can move it tighter to your view. Once I'm here I'm going to want to place center points and center lines in so I'm going to click center mark, click my circle, click center line and I know my circles in the middle so I'm just going to use these outside lines and place that center line in. Once you're to this point this is where I want you to uh, turn in your section view assignment but I'm going to go over the other two types of section views um, before this is before this video is over. So I'm going to delete this section view. This was a full section view and had a center line on it so I got an error but I'm going to do a half section view now. So it's exactly what it sounds like. Instead of cutting the object fully down the middle I'm going to go halfway down and then end up cutting to the right. So I'm going to click section view. I'm going to select my parent view. Do the same thing. I'm going to lock up on my midpoint, come up a little bit, click to drop it, go straight down to the center point, click to drop it because it's halfway through my object, and then come straight out to the right. And then I'm going to click again and then hit enter on my keyboard to place all of that down. And now I'll move my section view to the right, place it down, and hit enter. And now you can see we have that hatching up top because we're slicing through it, but we lost that hatching on the bottom. So we no longer are slicing through that bottom. We're coming to the center. And then once I start moving to the left, I'm going to have solid object over here. So that solid object is the side of our view. So if I was looking at the right side of this object, I would see solid object. The reason that's not hatched is because you're actually looking at the side of it. You're not looking at a cut. So this is cut down the center of it, so we're gonna have hatching. We're not gonna have hatching if I'm just looking from the right side of it. So a half section view is going to be halfway down the object, then either to the right or left, most likely to the right, to place down a right, um, a right view. Whenever you guys are doing a assignment, it'll tell you what kind of section view you're going to need. The last section view I'm going to go over is offset section views. Um, An offset is pretty much just a crazy line through a, um, through a base view to kind of give you all the features. So if I had a bunch of holes inside of here and a bunch of slants and stuff and I want you to see that, I could use an offset section view. So I'm going to do a section view, click my parent view, and I'm actually going to start this out over here. Okay. Once I click that, I'm going to come in, I'm going to click once more, come down to the center, click, drag over, click, drag down, click, drag over, click, drag down, click, then drag over. And I want to be about equidistant as the other A outside of my object, so I'm just going to click that and then drop it and hit enter on my keyboard. Now we're given a section view. I could place that down up here. Hit enter. And now you can see that I also dropped this section title onto my base view. I never want text on top of a view. So um, I could either move this view up. I could move the text up. So I'm going to move this text straight up to get it out of the way. Now looking here, I can see I could follow my line. So I could see that I am on the line here, so I'm not hatching. Then when I get into the object, I have hatching, hatching, until I get to my circle. Now I have all of my open circle till I get back into my object, which is hatching. And that's all shown to you up here. Now you could also place down a projected view. So say I want to project this to the right. Hit enter. So now I have a projected view. I have a top view, and I have a, or I have a section view, and I have a base view. Always remember, put your center lines in. So I'm going to click center line, 
and I know this circles through the center, so I'm going to drop it side to side, one side to the other side, and now that looks good.